Hey guys, welcome back to the Book Haven with Rachel and Raven. Grab a cup of something yummy and let's get this episode started. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about um, the books that we have DNF'd, which is did not finish, or shelved is another term you could use for it, where you just couldn't finish it. So I know for myself, I really don't like shelving books yeah. um, or not finishing them, especially if like somebody recommended it to me. But there are times, and I'm here to tell everyone, that it is okay to not finish a book Mm -hmm. to put it down because I feel like a lot of times people feel like they have to finish and you get in a rut of like well I can't move on and read something else because I haven't finished this one but really like it would be better if you just like walked away and started a new book just so you could keep on reading you know yeah and it just might not be the right time for that book there's seasons for different books I mean I have some on my list that are definitely like I will circle back to in a different season, but yeah, when I tried to read them, it wasn't happening. So, okay, so I'm going to go first. So my first book is um, Lovely War by Julie Berry, mm-hmm. and um, this one for me, <laughs> which I, we're going to have a lot of conversations about the books um, that... I have on my list, I think, because you've read most of them. The Lovely Wars for me, I know so many people like this book. I'm definitely in the minority, but I could not get into it. And it, um, it's written in the perspective of gods and goddesses and, and like Greek mythology. Yeah, Greek mythology. And, and kind of like how they play with humans and interact with humans and, and stuff like that. And I just could not get into it. So I didn't make it very far, maybe just a few chapters in, but it just was not for me. It felt kind of cheesy. In the beginning, they're at a hotel, right? And they're like meeting up between several and they're talking. And so the story had just gotten started about how, was it Aphrodite? I don't even know who the girl goddess was. But I'm astonished by your memory because I do remember that I loved this book, but wow, I do remember. <laughs> well, because I've like vividly picture, this should be a bookish question, but like how you read, like I vis- visually picture, um, you know, the story and how it's going kind of like a movie in my head. Mm-hmm. So I can remember them being at a hotel and having conversations about like meeting up and whatever but then it flashes to like her maybe having like a relationship with a human or like that just getting going and I was just like no I can't so I so I know you liked yeah (laughs) so I'm just going back and like looking at my review (laughs) probably my top book for 2020 (laughs) does this surprise anyone (laughs) I I, I don't know. And maybe this is a season book. Like, maybe I could try to go back and read it at a different point. But I was just like, this is not for me. I definitely right remember now. that it took me a while so. to get into it. I think I also loved it because there was, it was clean. And um, at least that's what I put in my review. So um, that I remember about it. Like, there wasn't a lot of graphic. It was, it was still a, like a beautiful love story, but it wasn't filled with stuff that I don't necessarily like. It's kind of like an adult version of Percy Jackson. Yeah. If that like would win anybody over to it. But, and I've read, you know, we've read Percy Jackson, but I, um, I don't know. I could not get into this <laughs> book. So then we'll funny. leave it at that. <laughs> okay. So then my next book is another one that you like. Um, A Gentleman in Moscow. So many people that I know really, really like this book. My mom is one of them. Um, And I just couldn't get into it. So my my, um, tag for this one is just going to be that this was not the right season because I do like everything that it has in it. I should technically like this book, but I just, it felt so slow and just... Well, it is it is a you know? slow one. It's a slow one that you have to like get far far into it before it kind of picks up. But yeah. And it's not a it's not a small book. No. It's not super small. So, I just think that the my brain capacity just wasn't there to 
um, give to it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just couldn't um, stay engaged. It didn't make me want to pick it up. And I think that is the key um, to knowing when you're done with something, when it needs to be shelved, is when you do not want to pick it back up. Yeah. Like, I'll find other things to do or I'll go listen to a podcast or like something other than reading. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that's how I know, like, ugh, I, I need to move on. So yeah. the next one is The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. <laughs> <laughs> so basically all these books on her list, I love. <laughs> so, and I know like y'all did this one, you did this one with your kids and had like the bestest book club and... Okay, I tried to read this with my kids, and we could not get into it. And I think I've mentioned before, but I am not a fan of the animal books. So I knew it was going to be a stretch. And I feel like we were reading it because, y'all, you were doing it as a book club. I and think we you wanted tried to it. Try to... Like, you tried it again. I think y'all had tried it before. And then yes, you were going to try it again. when my kids were younger. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's, it's written in a very interesting style. Mm -hmm. um, like, very short, clipped sentences because yeah. it's from the animal's perspective which i totally get but um i think the the thing that sealed the deal was um the they're talking about poop or something like that and my kids were like <laughs> what is happening we're done <laughs> so my next one is greenwood by michael christie and the reason why I did not like this one, and I, I probably read, I would say, half of this book. Um, it is written in four perspectives. Four different people are talking in this book. And it is written, the one perspective is 2034, one is 2008, one is 1974, and one is 1934. That's a lot, I of, could that's not. A lot of storylines. <laughs> Yes, I could not keep up with what was going on. And I say the years because, like, it's so, like, so you're following this one family through um, how they, they have this island. Um, and it's about trees. And my grandpa was a forester, so I thought, oh, I'm just going to love this book. But it was so confusing to follow. Like, I just could not keep up with, now, wait, what happened when this person, like, because, you know, when you're going between four, like, I can't remember three chapters ago what that person, like, how yeah. we left off on that story. So, <laughs> but this is another one that has really good reviews. But I, no, I will not pick this one back up again because I do not, I do not care for that kind of storytelling. That's a lot of storylines. So, and then my last one. So I might, I might pick it up. <laughs> I haven't it read that It has one. a super interesting premise. It's about, um... I'm trying to remember something about like um, trees and there's like not a whole lot of trees left anymore. And so there's this island that this family owns that has trees. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but then they start going back in time of like how the world got to where it is with the tree situation. And so it's an interesting premise. I think it got muddled for me trying to keep up with all the family drama, all the different characters. Mm -hmm. Um and all of them are different, so there is a distinction in that, but it's still just so, like, I, I felt like I needed a flow chart to see, like, like how one story was progressing because I just could not keep track of how that one person was progressing because there was so much other stuff going yeah. on at the same time. Yeah. So, and then the last one is News of the World. This one was just slow and boring <laughs> yeah i put I, I think i gave it four or like five stars and i literally don't remember what it was about which is sad which is it right it's pitch. about i know it's about a, a guy and he's trying to get this girl um like it's like western america times i don't know like 1800s maybe um maybe or er, maybe early 1900s but he's trying to help this girl get to her family um, and they're like traveling there and it's just, oh my word, it was so boring. I couldn't I do it. I feel like there's a movie about it. Is there a movie out? 
they did make a movie about it and it has like Tom Hanks. And let me tell you, I tried to watch the movie and couldn't get through the movie. <laughs> like, I don't know why this story just does not appeal to me at all in the least bit. So there's that. And like, it's a movie. It's like two hours. I couldn't even commit to that. My bookish question for today is what writing style do you dislike the most? Um, okay. This one's a hard for, hard one for me. I feel like I like all writing styles. I would say that the one that's most difficult for me or it takes me a while to like get in the rhythm of it is like a prose type of writing. Um, and the only one of the books that's coming to mind is, or like a, a book written in a poetry style. So like, um, there's a book called Bluebirds and it's just very, it's just like written in poetry and I don't know. What is that writing? So I think it's prose. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's just I very short, for that either. short sentences or partial sentences. Once I get into the rhythm of reading it, um, it's like, it's fine, but it's very different than like reading of, you know, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know how to describe this, but that one would probably be the one that I would say like, it's, hey, it's hard. That one's hard for me to get into. Um, but I can do it. It's just a stretch of my brain. <laughs> okay, so mine, I have two because, of course, I do. Um, and the first one is epistolary books, which is probably my number one. So you um, probably which should is explain that book, term. Yeah. <laughs> right, which is a book written in letters um, to, like, it can be different, but it's mainly just, it's like a book of letters. And the letters are telling the story or whatever. So oh like goodness. letters, like as in writing letters. People, like people writing write, letters yeah. to other people. <laughs> Not the alphabet the letters. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be weird. that didn't even occur to me. Um, so a popular one like this is like the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society book, which I love that story, but I love the movie more because it's told in a story and the letters – are just like, I don't know, you just lose me. I can't get on board with thinking that this is actually how you would write a letter to someone telling out a yeah. story the way you, like, you're not going to say. And then he said, looking at what, you know, like, you just don't write that way. So I have a really hard time getting into those kinds of books. So I normally just steer clear of them because it's just not my cup of tea. There are books that I have read that I have finished that are written like that. I just, I would prefer it to not be written like that. I would like the story, not um, the perspectives of different people going to different, I don't know. Yeah. If that makes sense. But yeah. So then um, my second one, which I've already kind of mentioned, is the multiple perspectives. I don't mind dual, even like, do you call it triple timelines? I don't know. Um, I don't mind more than, you know, two I don't, I don't really care for more than three, but for sure, like once you get to four, like it's just so hard. It's so hard to keep up with who's talking, what, what is happening. And I'm supposed to remember, yeah, you know, chapters back from what was happening. Or my favorite is when they do it, like there's no rhythm to who you're going back and forth between. So you might have two chapters on top of each other that are the same person. And then you throw in a somebody from five chapters ago <laughs> yeah um surprise and you know what book we just yeah what book we just or i just read i think was the lost year um oh yeah. i'm not gonna remember who it's by but it's about the ukrainian um girls and so there was a girl in america and then there's two girls in ukraine and it's all happening at, at the same time but it's just so hard to keep track of who was doing what? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I really struggle with that. Um, 
All right, so I'm gonna dive into my shelved books books list. I'm just gonna go through um, five that I have listed here. I'm sure there are more, but. Um, <laughs> so number one on my list is Turtles All the Way Down. I know that people love this book. Boo. It was just really <laughs> hard for me to, I don't know. I didn't like I didn't like his writing. I didn't like, I just thought it was dumb. Which it's, it's John Green <laughs> yeah. who wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's not a book that I would have picked up on my own. It was one I think that I picked up because you recommended it. I'm sure it, I told you. Yeah, yeah. I, because I really liked it. Yeah. I know. So I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but, um, and then number two is Anna Karenina. I really wanted to love this book. Um, but I didn't like the storyline. I didn't like, I don't know. And I tried. I gave it a good, I feel like a good fair shot. That book is not small. And I wanted to read it because it's like classic. And um, I might go back to it at some point. I don't know. But I felt like it was kind of boring. And it was just felt like the same stuff over and over again. Um, so, yeah. I really didn't yeah. like that one. Um, and then what's... Okay. Okay, so number three on the list is One Day in December. I didn't like this book because, one, the cover was incredibly too colorful. I'm surprised you picked it up. I don't know what happened. I had a lapse in something that day. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure why I picked it up. I, I You didn't recommend it to me. I'm not sure if... If I just was like, oh, I'll just try it. Um, not really sure. But, I mean, it starts out, I think, like, in the first chapter of this book. Um, this girl, she's on this double-decker bus. And, okay, so think about that. Like, she's on the top of this double-decker bus. And she they stop at this bus stop. And somehow she falls in love with this guy that's sitting at the bus stop. How did she, how, I mean, like their eyes met and it Doesn't was, that happen for everyone? That's so, no. <laughs> and I can't stand it. I'm like, you tied this up with a pretty ribbon right at the beginning of the book. Um, and I just don't like that kind of stuff. It's very like hallmarky and I don't know. I seriously doubt it got better after that point because um, it wasn't good to begin with um so i didn't like that one it was definitely not for me not saying i judge you if you read that book but um, did you say who wrote it no do you have it is it josie silver oh it, it mm -hmm. yeah okay um and then next on my list is the pursuit of happiness i had seen the movie and i loved the movie so i thought oh like I'm one of those people that if I read a book, I mean, if I watch a movie and I haven't read the book and I find out there's this book, I want to read the book. Um, and so I had picked that one up, but the language in that book was way too much for me. And I am talking like every other line, just multiple things. And I can handle language to a point, but this one was just way too much and so I ended up and not only that but there were like I mean think about it being homeless and some of the things that you know come with that it's very sad but it was super graphic um in that book so I did not make it very far in that book because like I said it started from the get-go <laughs> um yeah. and then my last one I'm I mean I'm sad about but I feel like I feel like, okay, the book is Harry Potter. I read three of them, I believe. <laughs> three. And I don't think that it's the book. I think it's that I have a really hard time with fantasy. I have a hard time getting into that. Because I think we talked about, on a previous episode, I think we talked about um, A Wrinkle in Time. And there was another one. But... I just have a really hard time getting into fantasy like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wanted, well, and I I wanted think, to love it. 
But I, just, I think we've talked about this too. Like I was reading them as they were coming out and I was definitely an older, um, like I started reading them in high school. Um, but I started when they were coming out and there's a complete different, um, you know, love for it because it's nostalgic for me as well. Right. So, you know, I went through it with my kids and, but it's definitely, I don't know. Going back, those first, especially those first couple, I would really challenge you to go on. But the first couple are very um, more juvenile. But then once you get deeper into the story, they really start escalating. Like, Which is what I hear. But right, and there I know. may be there may be a time <laughs> when I like pick it up and run with it again. But yeah, I haven't even seen the movies. Is that like... Which is just crazy to me. Like, we have been to um, Harry Potter World in California and in Florida. Like, we are Harry Potter people. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. The awkwardness of just, like, I don't know what to say to that. It's because it was not, like, a part of my... You know, I was... During that time when they, I mean, like I existed (laughs) during the time when they were coming out, like I was young and I feel like it is different when you grew up, you know, reading them as they came out. And, um, I wish there was a really great series that I would be willing to read that. Do you miss that slow, um, I don't know. I feel like everything is so instant right now that, you know what I'm talking about? Like when you had to wait for books to come out. That um, anticipation. Yes. We're, we're waiting for the next Nevermore book for the past however many years. Yeah, like what, 10 years? <laughs> the first book in the Nevermore series that we're talking about is The Trials of Morgan Crow. That's the first book. And the author is Jessica Townsend. And we'll totally talk about this when we talk about book clubs and stuff. But yes. these books, like, we always have a book club party. And now it's going to be that our kids are, like, in their 30s by the time the series is finished. <laughs> <laughs> because it takes her, like, three or four years to put out a book. It's it, crazy. It does. and But they're, she does a really great job with them. And those are some of our, yes, we're going to have to talk about those when we talk about book clubs. Because those are some of our some of our favorite um memories is that book club. oh for sure yeah. So fun. yeah but no i would say i would compare that to harry potter it's a, it's a whole different world and setup and stuff like that but but the same kind of like fantasy the books are filled with a lot of um complex storylines that build slowly in the background Okay, so we're currently, for our current read, we actually both just read the same book and um, finished it, and we really, really want to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. So the book is Counting the Cost by Jill Duggar. She gives credit to to Derek Dillard and Craig Borless. I don't know how you say that. Um, Which, did you think it was weird that she doesn't use his last name? Like, she uses oh, the Duggar she, name. She didn't? No. Yeah. Like, it is Jill Duggar and Derek Dillard. Oh. I did not even realize that. How did I not yeah. realize that? Um, I mean, it's written pretty big on the cover, so I'm not sure how you missed it. <laughs> but, um, so this is, for those who don't know, um, the show... It was like, it, what, it started off 17 kids and counting and then 18 and 19. But the Duggars have the whole bunch of kids. They had a TLC show. Um, and they were, um, what would you say, like fundamentalist Christian? Oh, yeah, Christian, for sure. Something like that. Fundamentalist. Um, wearing the long, right, wearing the long jean dresses. Well, I guess it, they weren't always jeans, excuse me. But um, long dresses and long hair and their kids courted. And so anyway, so that's like the whole TV show. But I don't know about you, but I have always wanted to know like the behind the scenes of that because they always just seem like it just always seemed off. I don't know. Um, 
And I didn't watch every single episode of that show, but I did watch enough of it where I would have known, like, the different kids and stuff like that. Oh, and then going back. So this is also if you watched Shiny Happy People over the summer on Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime. They had the, uh, what, like a docuseries or something about the biblical teachings that this family followed as well. So they're kind of sprinkled in that documentary yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So, and this, so this is about the daughter of their family and she's writing her kind of journey through growing up that way and leaving and all of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So I grew up, I mean, I didn't grow up. I watched these because this is what was on when I would be up nursing my kids um, in the middle of the night and I was trying to stay awake and these would be like the reruns would be on and um, yeah, so I did keep up with them and you know, I, I think I thought in the beginning that it was just like this completely innocent show, but um, eventually there were things that I was like questioning on and yeah, so her her book is, she did a really great job. I'll just say that. I know we're going to talk about it in a separate podcast, um, but yes, I really- we're so excited to talk about this book that yes. it, it has to have its own podcast. Yes, we're having a hard time not saying too much because it's, yeah, there's a whole lot that I think we want to say on that um, book and bring in some other books that we've read kind of in that same vein. So, but yeah, I read it in less than 24 hours and I did as well. And I gave it five stars and so did you. So if you need any more recommendation, I don't even know what we could do to, to promote it more. It, I feel like she did such a good job with kind of like giving background information or like behind the scenes stuff, but not feeling like she was just dragging her family through the mud or... Mm -hmm blaming or not even like I felt like they kind of took responsibility for when they kind of messed up too or maybe didn't choose the better option of how to handle certain situations yeah and I think a lot of times memoirs can be rose colored from that person's perspective where they don't want to own you know like they want to put themselves in the best light possible right yeah so I agree. my only hot take from this book is that she mentions, and I feel like I just have to say it <laughs> you now. You just can't, you can't. But I can't that. not, you know. <laughs> but um, she talks about that they have chosen to send their kids to public school um, because of her experience with homeschooling um, and it just not being good. And the way she kind of phrases it and um, puts it out there kind of makes it seem like all homeschool is, and I know she didn't mean it this way, but kind of like, all homeschooling can be detrimental because of not like people like the parents controlling what what they're actually learning and yes is that used inappropriately yes a lot of the time but not all the time so to sum it up to make it sound like you didn't choose homeschooling because you know um it's not used correctly or it can be abusive or stuff like that like going to public school has issues as well you know so I kind of just wish that she would have said this is why we didn't choose that but I know that it's not like I know it can be done oh like right but we're just not choosing to do that I wish she would have said it more like that instead of just kind of saying like we didn't choose homeschooling because you know yeah see like, I, yeah. I read the hard copy and I'm wondering if it was like I'm going to have to go back and look because I didn't pick up on that. I did pick up on that it was a huge deal for her to like make that decision because it was so outside of like her thinking, I guess, um, and that she was breaking away from that way of thinking that she had, you know, been taught her whole life. And maybe, um, yeah. But, um, but I just didn't, I didn't hear it like that, I guess. And maybe I skimmed over. I don't know. But I can kind of relate to that because in the beginning with, with homeschooling, because my experience was very awful. Um, that's like very awful. That didn't sound right. But um, 
it wasn't a good experience and I said I would never homeschool and then you know eventually years later like the Lord dealt with my heart um, and changed my stance on that and so I don't know I don't know if maybe we just read it differently and that could be um you know because I know I did the audiobook which she reads and it's fantastic yeah um and that like literally this is the only issue I had with this book um but I just kind of wish she would have I don't know for me worded it in a different way to make it seem like and and maybe what like what you said from um like experiencing that side like you understand how she's wording it and and phrasing it there were points where she was you can hear the emotion in her voice yeah um reading it and i don't know how she read some of that stuff um and kept it together i'm sure it took a couple of tries but i appreciated the authenticness of it and again it was like giving you enough to to understand what happened but not like making it to where like she totally just burned the bridge to her family too yeah. you know yeah. yeah yeah i yeah there's a lot that i want to say on it but i'll save yeah, it yeah so we'll put I, a pin in that yeah. <laughs> uh, that sounds good but yes we will be doing that episode very soon because we're super excited to talk about that book and like you said other books that kind of fall in the same vein um we're still trying to figure out what we're going to call it but just kind of those interesting memoirs from different perspectives yeah okay guys we've come to the end of our time together we hope that you have been encouraged to read something new or if you're like raven reread something old but mostly we just hope that you have been inspired to read more in your life until next time bye